Hey everybody, Chad from Dark Monk here, and in today's instructional video, I'm going to show you the method that we use to sew wicks. Okay, so first let's talk about the tools that you're going to use. Starting with a really good pair of scissors. These are Kevlar shears. You can get carpet shears or just any really heavy duty pair of scissors to cut the Kevlar that you're working with. Second, Kevlar thread. I prefer the colored thread. I'll show you why in a minute. A really good curved needle. And this is a surgical stainless steel. This is what comes in our wick repair kits. A couple rubber bands. Good needle nose pliers. And if you're going to be taking apart an old wick and putting on a new wick, having a nice, that sharp seam ripper comes in really handy with if the old wick had stitching in it and you need to take it apart. So real quick, let's talk safety. Stitching is rarely the primary hold down for putting a wick onto an object. You really want some type of mechanical method. In this case, in this eating torch, we have a screw into the metal itself holding the main wick. We're going to sew over that screw so you don't hurt yourself with the heated metal, but it's the screw that's holding the wick onto the eating torch, not the thread. There are some fans and things like that that might have holes in the end metal that you can actually stitch to the hole. As long as that's underneath the wick, that's safe, but otherwise you really do want some kind of mechanical method holding your wick to the actual prop. Okay, first things first, how do we roll the wick? You want to fold over the edge, roll the object, and you can do it in your hand, such that the end of the wick, the place you roll, is all going to be flush but on both sides, so it's nice and smooth. You don't want the end sticking out, that's going to burn. How tight is going to depend on the type of wick, something like an eating torch like this, you want a little loose, kind of like a kind of firm marshmallow kind of feel, that way it has extra fuel in it for fleshing or for eating, something like a pair of fans or a contact staff, you want a little tighter so that you don't have loose fuel flying out and you have a bunch of fireflies when you go to light up the first time. Once you get it about where you want it, take your rubber band, go right in the middle, and try to line up each layer of rubber band, especially over the edge there, where it's going to be right on top of itself. You don't want a bunch of rubber band pieces all over the pace. So we're going to go around that in a minute. Go back around, make sure it's all lined up pretty good. Maybe tighten it if it needs to be. When you're wrapping around, you do want to make sure that this folded edge is not right over your mechanical. Like if there was a screw down there, I don't want it right over that because you can't sew through the screw. Um, you also want to try to line up that folded edge on the inside where it's a little bit before this folded edge on the outside. And that's going to give you a, a little uh, smoother transition all the way around if that interior end bit lines up where the folded bit is. So if you're doing a bunch of these, you can set them all up like this and then stitch later, or you can just do one at a time. Okay, next up is the stitching. Uh, let's start with how much thread do you need, and that's going to totally depend on the wick that you're sewing. Uh, for something about this size, I'd go about 24 inches, something in that range. That might be a little long. If you're doing a bunch of them, go ahead and measure your first one, sew it, and see how much extra you have, and then maybe cut it down. You don't want a huge amount extra because then your arm's doing these giant movements and it'll wear your shoulder out. I made a quick surgeon's knot, just once over, once over. So it's kind of box knot with an extra loop through. And then you want to pull that down to where you have at least two inches or so hanging out there. It can be a little longer, that's about two and a half inches. And that's going to be my anchor point. Once I have that, take the other end. I like to pinch the edge between my fingers, take the eyelet on the needle, put it right there, and then push it right through. Just slide my hand on the other side of the eyelet, pull, and I've threaded my needle. First thing you want to do is be on the side, not the folded edge side, but on the side that we're going towards. And I'm going to go at the top, go in about two layers. So I'm going to find about two layers in, and I'm going to go just straight in. I don't, you know, go in. I don't know, about a quarter of an inch or further and come out. But you really want to be in there straight for a ways before you come out. And what we're going to do is we're going to hide the very final knot down in there. And that's why you want to be in there a ways. The secret to all of this is making the smallest stitches you can. And the reason that is, is the reason the stitches will ever fail and the sewing will fail, is if it absorbs enough heat to burn through, it'll burn through. If the stitches are giant stitches, especially on the outside or big loops, well that's going to absorb a lot of heat. If you can make really small stitches, mainly have most of the Kevlar thread on the inside of the Kevlar, well that's going to protect the thread, not absorb heat, and last the longest. So our goal here is little tiny stitches. So I'm stitching right beside the first one, coming up a little short of where the, um, where the edge is, pushing that edge forward a little bit, 
and then bringing my stitch up. You want to be pretty close to that that folded edge. If you find yourself back with the first part of your stitch, get closer with the second. I'm going to get a little closer with this. Go a little forward on where you're stitching at. And that's just going to pull that front edge forward a little bit. Pull. As you can see, as I pull down, I'm not going to pull super tight, but I'm going to pull it nice and snug, maybe a little over snug. That stitch almost disappears. That's your goal. You want almost nothing showing going to the next one. Don't go all the way up to the top. Get close to the top. That's about as close as I want to go. If you go all the way to the top, the top has a tendency to be, or the bottom, to burn first and burn away. And if that happens, the entire stitching will just come apart. All right. So if you're having trouble getting it through, try wiggling it back and forth like this. Wiggling it as you go. Don't push. Don't try to do that. These things will break and these things will cut you too because they're very strong metal and when it breaks it really can hurt. So again, I'm, I'm wiggling back and forth to pull it out. I'll show you in a second how you can use a needle on this plier. It's a little different. So I've got two in. I went up to the top. I spaced them eh, about a quarter inch apart. Doing the same thing again. I'm going to go in Get really close to the edge, and I'm close to the edge here. Now I'm going to use the needle on his pliers to show you. You always want to get really close and pull just a little bit. Pull, pull, pull. You get stuck, wiggle it a little bit, and pull. Now if you're pushing from the other side, do the exact same thing. Get really close to where it's going in and push. I'll show you that in just a second. Pull it tight. I'm going to go under the rubber band, so I'll give myself a stitch, just like I did before. Here's how I would do it with the needle nose. So very close, push, push. You're not as accurate with needle nose, so that's why I don't use them as much. But as long as I'm on the other side of the rubber band here, I'm fine. Make sure you don't create a knot. Pull it up and out. Now just even looking at this, you can't even see where there's not those stitches are, barely. And that's why I like the green thread. It shows me how well of a job I did in hiding my stitches. Get it right on that edge and bring it up. Okay. So we got to that point. I'm going to look back over, check my stitches. I should very small little stitches, which is all I want, so I should barely see any green. Go ahead and take my rubber band off before I've come back up. Now the next thing you want to do is keep the entire wick, especially the back side of the wick, from sliding. Now the way you do that is putting a few stitches all the way around the wick. So from right where I'm at right now, I've got to go back to the top anyway. So what I'm going to do is, again, really small stitch. Come up here. Watch out for wherever your mechanical lockdown is that you don't run into that. Just going to, I, I use my thumb behind it, and there's a little technique that it, I kind of do. Just let that guide it, but this is another thing. You don't want to push real hard if that needle broke into my thumb, which it has before. It hurts. So I'm coming, if you notice, I'm actually kind of coming up towards the top, because you got to get back to the top to tie it off anyway, and this is a great little method to come back around and get up to the top. And I mean, you can just barely see those stitches. And now I'm going to come out, I'm going to take kind of a big one, because I want to come out near where that other one is at. It doesn't really matter right where you come out, but you want to be near that top edge, because now we're going to, I'll show you, come up near that. All right, so I got it nice and tight, nice and snug, all the way around looks good. I'm going to small tiny stitch, and I'm going to come up right between the exact same layers that the first original knot was done. So, coming up right there. Setting that down, take my short end, and this is why you need to leave the extra, make two surgeon's knots. So one, first knot, tie it tight, and that should kind of already sink down a little bit. Do the second knot, one, two, here we go, and down, ah, perfect. Take my scissors, cut just the short end, not the threaded end. So I have a little tiny bit hanging out there. Now, take the, with the needle still on it, I'm going to go right back in the exact same spot, same between the same folds. Take the needle out, kind of deep in there, and I'm going to pull, 
and that knot goes right inside and that's what you want. I can't see the knot, it's hidden, all my threads are hidden, very little heat absorption on the thread itself. Cut it very close, don't cut your Kevlar, and you'll have finished the sewing job. Well, I hope this helped. If you have comments about the techniques we used or the video itself or other ideas on videos that we can make that would help you, please leave them in the comments below or send us an email at info at dark-monk.com. And as always, have a great time spinning.